Hi, this is Karen. And this is Nancy. And welcome to our first ever Kids Momo Mo segment, where we give you Mo Kids Momo. Yesterday we saw the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, which came out on September 18th, and we're going to do a review of it. Of course, we picked this movie because it's based on the classic picture book by Judy Barrett, illustrated by Ron Barrett. In case you guys haven't seen the movie, I just want to let you guys know, spoiler alert! Be aware that we may discuss some things that give away parts of the movie, so if you're going to see the movie after this, just keep that in mind. On the other hand, if you haven't seen the movie, you might just think we're crazy people because you won't have any idea what we're talking about. If you have a hunger for excitement <gasps> and an appetite for adventure, <gasps> prepare to get served. So Nancy, what did you think of the movie? I really liked it. Me um, too. I had really high expectations, but I laughed the whole way through. I really loved the book when I was a kid, and when I saw the trailer, I was a little surprised because of the illustration style. It was it's very different from the book. So um, I was a little wary, but I really enjoyed the movie and thought it was really well written and really well acted and really well illustrated and animated and everything. So, so overall, a big smiley from you. Yes, a big smiley from me. What were your favorite parts? Um, aside from the, the representation of giant food, which, you know, I hope to possibly encounter in my lifetime, I really liked the appearance of gummy bears in the movie, which you'd have to see the movie to actually get it, but, <laughs> you know, in general, I just really love gummy bears. And I really liked that the main character, Flint Lockwood, narrates his own actions, which I thought was really funny. When he's inventing things, he'll say what he's doing, for instance, grabbing the remote control, turning on the TV, screwing the light bulb in. Uh, and just for our listeners, those are not actually the things that he does when no. he invents. He's much more technologically and scientifically savvy than Nancy is. Yes. These are just examples of the way that he speaks while he's inventing. What were your favorite parts of the movie? Well, just like you, of course, I loved the gigantic food. Amazing. And as we've already established over many different Kids Momo podcasts, I just love food. So the fact that this movie was all about food and there was food all over the place <laughs> from the very beginning to the very end, just I could not have been happier. But in terms of more specific parts of the movie that I liked, I really love the way that Lint walked around as a little kid. Like just his mannerisms and his way of walking oh, yeah. were just like adorable. And that was about like one minute into the movie and I just laughed and laughed. Like I actually laughed out loud and I think I was the only one in the theater <laughs> laughing out loud at that I point think I so early. That. It was a little embarrassing. <laughs> And then the other things that I liked uh, were later on, once he actually mastered making food fall from the sky, um, I liked the idea of the restaurant where there was no roof on it. Oh, right. So they just sat with their plates on, uh, on the tables and then food would just fall down right onto <laughs> their plates and then it would be like, your order's up! <laughs> um, and also I liked the um, birthday present that he came up with for that, oh, yeah. that um, little kid. And I don't want to give it away, but I just thought that if I woke up on the day of my birthday and saw what that little kid saw out the window, <laughs> I would be like about 100 pounds heavier than I am right now. <laughs> and really happy. And really happy. So you would give the movie a smiley face? Yes, I would give it a smiley, grinning, and also possibly stuffed with food smiley <laughs> face. That sounds about right. Yeah, so I'd actually say that the only bad part of the night was that we didn't get to eat anything afterwards. Well, that's only because we were so full from eating the ice cream and nachos prior to the movie, which um, I remember on the way up to the movie, I was like, wow, this is really unhealthy, and then completely dismissing that thought. <laughs> so that... Well, I thought that we would watch the movie and be so enticed by all the images of food that we just couldn't help but eat afterwards, but I guess I sort of overestimated our ability to stuff ourselves twice in one night. Plus, the food got a little unappetizing towards the end of the movie. It did remind me of all these things that I really love to eat um, that I hadn't eaten in a really long time, like Jello. Like oh, I, I would love to have a giant palace made of Jello. Yeah, that I haven't had awesome. Jello in a really long time. So Nancy, that actually brings up a question. In the movie, all the characters can order what they want from Flint Lockwood, whatever they want to have fall from the sky. Mm -hmm. So would you order Jello? Um, that would be tempting, but I don't think I would order Jello. 
as you know, my favorite food is fruit, but I feel like some fruits that fall from the sky that would really hurt, like that giant watermelon that came from the sky. That's kind of dangerous. That's true. Or coconuts, can you imagine? I know. Although I don't really love coconuts that much, but I do love fruits. It is my number one pick of all foods in the world. That's true. I remember like right when we were getting to know each other, I don't know how this came up. <laughs> I love talking about food, so I guess I must have brought it up, but I remember asking when I found out that you love fruit so much, like if you had the choice, would you give up all the other foods in the world and right. only eat fruit, or would you give up fruit and never be able to eat it again, but you can eat anything else that you wanted? And I picked fruit. I decided that I would eat fruit for the rest of my life. And by the way, this encompasses all kinds of fruit. So I think we said also like juice was allowed. Yes. And like you can make your fruit into some another form. So this has become one of these things that I, I ask my friends all the time the same question. And my friend Nicole responded with potatoes. And then she was like, well, if I want potatoes, does that include potatoes with ketchup? So I didn't know what the rules were because huh. since you're the originator of this game, That's what do you true. think? That's a good question. Like, can she only eat potatoes with potato sauce, basically? Or can she eat Like, maybe with... we'll allow condiments, right. but you, we won't allow, like, sides. So, okay. like, you can't eat potatoes and eggs or something, mm -hmm. but you could eat potatoes with ketchup, and you could put salt and pepper on it. Right. Because, you know, you're not really truly cooking potatoes unless you're using some other things, like oil, for example. Right. Okay. So, I would say, like, potato dishes. Maybe. Okay. That's... All right. I'll have to let her know that. <laughs> What was your thing again? Sushi! Of but, course. Yeah, so I would definitely order sushi from Flint Lockwood if I could. And actually I was thinking, as you know, Nancy, my dream husband would actually be a sushi chef because then I'd have my own personal sushi restaurant <laughs> in my kitchen all the time. But I was thinking that if I had a machine like Flint Lockwood's machine, mm -hmm. that I could actually be free to marry for love. So actually, because I love the movie so much, it makes me want to check out the book, which I haven't read in a really long time. I don't really remember it very well. Um, and Nancy, you mentioned that the illustration style is very different, mm -hmm. but are there any other differences? Well, the story itself is actually really different because there is no Flint Lockwood and there's no inventor who invents a machine that makes food fall from the sky. So the premise of the book is different. It just It's about a grandpa telling his grandchildren about a town of Chew and Swallow where they already have food just falling from the sky and... Just like for no reason? Yeah, it's just that way. They just happen to live in a really lucky town, but unfortunately <laughs> they get unlucky and the, the food just naturally becomes really large and they have to just sail away at the very end of the book, so... Oh, well, yeah. that's sad. But it's actually not that sad because there's a sequel to Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs called Pickles to Pittsburgh where they actually get to return to Chew and Swallow and so we get to see their adventure there so you should check that one out too. Yeah, I think I will because I really love this movie and so I'm definitely going to go back and reread Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and I'm going to track down Pickles to Pittsburgh because if I could just live in the world <laughs> of food forever I would just be so happy. We definitely recommend the book and the movie so check it out as soon as you can. That's it for our first ever Kids Mo 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 segment. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for plenty more Kids Mo 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 in the future. Bye.